Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today we're talking about a seismic shift in New Brunswick politics. New Brunswickers headed to the polls and voted for change. And in doing so, they made history. Susan Holt has led the New Brunswick Liberal Party to a decisive victory, ending six years of progressive conservative rule and becoming the first woman premier of the province. The results, 31 seats for the Liberals, 16 seats for the PCs, and two seats for the Green Party. Even outgoing Premier Blaine Higgs lost his seat. Now, as municipalities across the province are preparing for the new incoming government, some are asking themselves, what does this mean for local governments and the issues that matter most to the communities across the province? Now, to help answer that question, we caught up with Brittany Merrifield, the newly elected president of the Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick. We asked her to share her thoughts on the Holt victory and what this new government could mean for communities and municipalities across the province of New Brunswick. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. President Merrifield, thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about this uh, momentous seismic shift in the province of New Brunswick. Uh, the Higgs government is out and the incoming Holt government is in. Your initial reaction to Monday night's election uh, change? Well, I mean, this has been an important election for, for our sector as a whole. Um, our members are currently working through the most um, the most comprehensive governance reform since the 1960s from a structural perspective. We still have the fiscal piece and the property tax and the assessment piece to work through as well. So there's a lot of work to be done. Um, UMNB has engaged heavily with, with all of the political parties, including the, uh, the now in office liberals on this uh, particular um, major, major, major priority for us. And we're, we're really excited to, to engage once everyone is settled in. So we are just recording this two days after the election results were announced. So it's still early days at, at the end of it. But looking back on the campaign, I know UMNB had some very key advocacy work that they were doing during the campaign, particularly around infrastructure and financing. Are you optimistic or are you hopeful that this new incoming government has heard you during this campaign period that municipal issues might be taken seriously? Yeah, I, I have I have some serious confidence in that. The UMNB was incredibly organized going into this election. Our election advocacy, both at the party level and for our members, was like nothing UMNB has ever undertaken before. Um, we did some really excellent work with uh, a professor, an economics professor out of Mount Allison by the name of Dr. Craig Brett, and he pulled together some data for us that really helped us illustrate the fact that there is a major funding gap. It's not anecdotal. It really does exist, and it's been getting more and more pronounced for the last 25 to 30 years. Um, Premier elect Holt committed to our membership at our annual general conference to close the identified $200 million gap faced by our members. So, you know, yes, which I mean, so they are, they are listening. They have heard us. They understand that uh, we're not coming hat in hand with no data to back up what we've been saying for a very long time now. So we look forward to engaging with her and her government in order to uh, get this work done. Now, I'm, I'm a numbers guy. I, I like looking at the aftermath of any election. And the one thing that stood out to me was 
Uh, almost a third of this new incoming Liberal caucus has municipal experience, mm. whether that be elected officials or even as CAOs. Does that give you hope that municipal issues will be forefront because you have so many uh, now newly elected MLAs who have that experience and know the struggles that municipalities are dealing with? Absolutely. There's nothing that nothing can replace that on the ground experience and insight from having been in those chairs and in those rooms. So I'm really excited about engaging with those members that that have that unique experience. And looking at the municipal sharing, the revenue sharing that uh, UMNB has been advocating for, sort of in the same lines of what Saskatchewan or even Quebec currently has in place, uh, when I spoke to your predecessor, uh, Andrew Black, at the beginning of the campaign, he talked about how this is going to be something that they're looking for. Did you hear from the incoming Liberals that this would be a priority, or is it something that's on their radar? Fiscal reform is is a priority. And as I, I just said, they have recognized now that there is that $200 million minimum gap. That's sort of yeah. the bottom end of things. Um, so that's a really good place to start. And I think it's important to recognize that one of the things that we're asking for as an association, as municipalities across the province, is we're looking for a diversification of revenue. So, and, and if, if, they really want communities to be vibrant and resilient. That is the key to making that happen. Uh, right now, of course, as you're aware, most of our revenue comes from property taxes. So that limits what municipalities can do. It limits the resilience of our municipalities. Um, we're looking for fair, transparent, predictable funding that we can count on so we know what's coming from year to year. This is also an affordability piece. One of the uh, the pieces of data that came out of Dr. Brett's report was that there's an increasing reliance on not just property taxes for municipalities, but residential property taxes. So with this lack of resilience, also mean, this also means that New Brunswickers are paying more property tax when there are other ways to finance municipalities to make ev- ev- us all more resilient and reduce that burden on our taxpayers. One of the key items that I hear when I speak to municipal leaders within the province of New Brunswick is housing concerns. The population of New Brunswick is growing and it is growing every single day. As we're talking, more people are commute going to uh, New Brunswick. Um, and it goes in hand in hand with that infrastructure issue that we're talking mm-hmm. about, because you're responsible for the underground infrastructure, the water, the wastewater, the pipes that go into these houses, but you're not responsible for the housing. Do you get a sense that this government is going to work with municipalities to help speed up or even work with municipalities to build more houses to address the house shortage that you have yeah. and even the affordable houses that you had need? Yeah, so... It's, it's important that municipalities have this support from the provincial government. We can't yeah. do it by ourselves. So in order to lay the land and make sure that we have those services in place for the housing to be built, we, we are going to have to work hand in glove with the provincial government. I have a, a, a real positive sense based on what they have said in the lead up to the election that this will be the case. Uh, one of the things we need to work with this government on as well is an urban housing strategy that is more defined and more powerful than than what currently exists. I want to turn to policing because it is an, another topic that was very prominent during this election and even with member municipalities that I speak to. Uh, what's your What's your hope that for for this government to address on the policing file? Is it just more rural officers in more rural and remote communities? Or is there an overarching theme that you're hoping this government takes when it comes to policing within New Brunswick? I, I would say the two big ones are accountability and partnership. So right now, um, the way it works, particularly with RCMP, is there's no real accountability of the forces to the municipalities that pay those bills at the end of the day. That's a really important piece. The other piece, when I say partnership, all decisions are being made at tables where municipalities aren't sitting. So anything, anything about us should be with us, and that definitely should be emphasized with the policing piece. You know, we... Uh, All of our municipalities have different priorities. They need to be heard. They need to be around those tables and they need to be part of the decision-making process. Have you had conversations with uh, Premier Designate Holt yet, or are you hoping to arrange something with Premier Designate Holt uh, in the next few days? Because I know it's still early days, but 
she's going to have to hit the ground running because she has a budget that she's going to have to pass in early 2025. And I'm assuming you'll want to be part of that discussion. Oh, absolutely. That is number one on our priority list is to sit down with uh, with the premier elect and uh, talk about the priorities of our members. Absolutely. And uh, between our association and the Francophone Association, we represent the vast majority of New Brunswickers. And I know that this government takes that seriously. Before I let you go, I, I do have to ask um Glenn Savoy, the former minister that municipalities dealt with, is was reelected. What was your relationship with him? And are you hoping to still be able to lean on him? Because he dealt with a lot of issues that municipalities and this new government is going to have to catch up very quickly on a lot of major issues that municipalities are dealing with today. Yes, well, we worked very closely with Minister Savoy, particularly on the fiscal reform piece. Yeah. And I'm sure that the, the minister uh, took that very, very seriously. And I'm sure that he would be more than willing to add advice if ever we were to ask for it. Because like you said, it's hard to replace that the institutional knowledge that you gain from being in the role. My last question before I let you go here is, do you have any hopes of who the next minister you'll be dealing with as local government officials? Or are you giving it in the hands of Susan Holt, the premier designate, to uh, well, pick pick her choice? Well, they have a, a bit of an embarrassment of riches in terms of who they could select for that role. And so um, I'm sure that we're going to end up with someone that is is appropriate and has a good fit and, and knows what they're doing. So I'm I'm satisfied to uh, to leave it in their hands because they have a lot of great talent to choose from. And finally, what's your message to New Brunswickers today who are waking up and who have woken up to a new government and how you hope the residents, the municipalities and this new provincial government will work together to address the community needs that you are asking the new government to address? Well, you know, I think that New Brunswickers sent a message that we all want to work together to move forward. And I want to thank New Brunswick for sending that message. We want to move forward. We want to move forward in a positive manner. We want our municipalities to be successful so that our, all of the places that we live, that we work, that we play are just as good as they can be. This is our home and uh, we want to invest in that. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We hope you've enjoyed today's conversation with the president of the UMNB. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. Your support has helped us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today. So continue to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Till then, everyone.